Two years later, we looked for Amber's daughter. We were in for a terrible shock. She had survived, but only just. We didn't know whether she'd been ill or had just found independence a little too tough to cope with. But whatever the trouble was, she looked seriously thin. There is plenty of food on the savannah, but you have to be fit and healthy to get it. If she didn't find the strength to hunt, she would die. We hoped that this was a sign that she was on the road to recovery. With her cubs long gone, Amber was a solitary female once again. Up to her old tricks, using the car as a lookout post, scanning the plains for prey. Of all the Masai Mara's big cats, cheetahs are the most vulnerable. Amber's story had been one of success. We think she's probably 12 years old now. That's an old cheetah in the wild. I have to say, I'm really, really glad we caught up with her. This may be one of the last times we get to see her. It was indeed the last time we saw Amber. Meanwhile, Amber's daughter was attracting the attentions of a male. But cheetah courtships usually have a stormy start. The little female is no match for Kimbia. This encounter is not about who's going to win the fight. Far more is it going to end in romance. on the nose out of that last encounter. He seems indifferent to the fact that his nose is quite literally pouring blood. Here he goes. Really starting to see the change from that initial full-on aggression when they first met into a much more flirtatious encounter that time, beginning to break down those barriers of hostility. This could be the start of a new generation of cheetahs. Over eight years, we've witnessed many dramas in the lives of these rare and vulnerable big cats. We've seen how cheetah mothers fight to raise their young, feeding, teaching and protecting their cubs on the long, hard journey to independence. A journey so few cheetah cubs survive. <laughs>